good? Yeah. All right, uh, first, just have you uh, spell your name on camera, please. Hi, my name is Edwin De La Cruz, E D W I N D E L A C R U Z. And spaces between De La Cruz yes. or all one word? Yes, sir. Cool. And you can look at me instead of the camera. Okay. Um, and what's your official position here? Just an organizer, something else you want to Yes, I'm an much? organizer of a four decade uh, uh, resident. I'm very proud of this community. Um, I'm also uh, the founder and uh, treasurer of uh, the Northern High Republicans, uh, Grassroots Movement, which is uh, designed not only for political purposes, but also to uh, get involved with the community. We have an absentee right now, leadership, and uh, I think that the vacuum has to be uh, completed by the people of the community. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about, more about, you know, obviously over the last month we've seen, you know, a few of these homicides, um, even going back to this Friday night in the Bronx. So why, why did you think now is the time to sort of get some together and have a little bit over there? Oh, we have, we, have been, we have been very concerned. Uh, we have basically been running out of patients, okay? Uh, it seems that there's no solution to these problems, okay? The problems are, they can, they, can be, they can be solved by changing police tactics. They can also be solved by eliminating the Nobel Reform Law, which is a, a big problem. It, is, it has a, a way to work, uh, you know, small crimes into larger crimes. And that's exactly what we are looking at right now. So we are basically citizens, okay? We are not politicians. We are basically people that are concerned. Uh, our job, we don't get paid to, to solve this problem. And so we gotta take our, we gotta take matters in our hand in a good way and try to see if we can get the community and the police united. Okay, it's very important because uh, if we can get the police and the, uh, the community united, then we can solve more problems. But right now, there's a large uh, mistrust between the community and the police. So we need to get them both together. And the only way we can do this is by, you know, having this kind of event, having this virtual, showing people that uh, victims do matter. I mean, as uh, Ms. Madeline is going to explain to you, Matt, it's the only way around. Criminals are in charge. Criminals are in the driver's seat right now. And we have a problem with that. Uh, I'm from Dominican Republic. And in Dominican Republic, when you see scooters with two people, individuals, okay? The police will stop them immediately. But most likely, there's a very good chance that they are up to no good. Okay, if you see somebody delivering food and you see that there's a, there's a bag of food delivered, then fine. You can, you know, let's break the law and you talk about it. And you, and, and, you know, and you give them a, a citation for it. But when you see someone uh, who's actually in a scooter uh, with two individuals, uh, the police need to understand you need to stop them. Because uh, in the American Republic, this is how most of the homicides are, street shootings are, this is how people get killed, this is how people get marked. And we have a serious problem. With that. Uh, this is how Mrs. Uh, Ortega, this, this, this is how Valeria Ortega, she's just walking home. It can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. My son right now lives on 404 uh, and, and uh, uh, 266 uh, Nico Avenue. He's afraid of coming out. It's a big boy. And he's uh, 6'3, 145 pounds. He's a crazy guy. He's afraid of coming out of this because of what he sees. Okay? Everything that's going on is uh, just completely out of control. And we need to definitely take over. Okay, the only way we can take over is the community has to start developing new leadership, and we need to start new grassroots movement like the Republican movement that I'm starting right now, uh, which is pro-police uh, against crime. And uh, you know, we need to. I'm glad that you guys are here because that's the only way we can basically, uh, you know, show what's going on. So I mean, you see, uh, just Friday night. Uh, Those reports are highly questioned, uh, number one, and uh, you guys, you guys, it's not, it's not about, it's not about, it's not the people. You have to definitely, it's not a report or a synthesis, okay? You need to speak to the You need to walk around. The mayor has to, uh, you know, uh, come to our neighborhood and speak to us. That comes to you know, the uh, They have all, you know, it's allowed to keep on because they are too well. Otherwise, it's, it's nonsense. It's probably happening. Um, you said this is political, but you know it is. It's, uh, not, it's not political. It's, it's, we're trying to keep it away from political as much as we can. But unfortunately, the, the, you know, the, you know, I'm not going to go back to politics again. But we have, we are very concerned. We are very concerned for our safety, and uh, uh, the police going to fix this problem. That's my own concern. And I'm also, we are highly advocating for the police and uh, uh, committee to come together. It's very important because if they do, uh, we might end up, uh, you know, communicating to the police who and where. And, 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 and how we can catch a criminal that is actually a, 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 a,
So having a fetch like this, you know, putting faces to some of those numbers, you know, making people see that they matter. Um, you know, you feel like that's that's the way to start building that trust. What what sort of things do you want to see that? Well, we need we need to. Uh, I highly recommend the police start having uh, rules in this one. Okay, so we need uh, the the old fashioned way of controlling. Okay, not by cars, by police. Okay, uh, talking to people. I highly advocate uh, the police department going into small businesses and sitting down, getting to know the orders, okay, getting to know them, having a cup of coffee. Uh, pres having that presence that I should need it, you know, that is absolutely right. So let's just say that's the metro store right across the street from here. What is actually stopping uh, someone to go in there and grab his cell phones? They're going to be free. They're going to go into the court system and they're going to be, uh, it's a revolving door. Nothing can happen. So what, what kind of terrorists? That is again because they know Bill or no back. We have to stop that. The people need medical treatment, they need to get medical treatment. That's unfortunately a uh, big situation. Um, going back in history, uh, last year, we had um, we had we had Jose a friend of mine, I grew up with him. And is one of the most peaceful and honest men in the whole world, hard work is and did everything he could. And he was a part of the military, and he defended himself in the leg and coming back. Did any uh, public official ever visit him? That was none. Zero. That was worked away. Um, we have to change that. We have to put a uh, human face to the community. And uh, we need to basically uh, come together. And uh, police really need to start reaching out to us more often. And, 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 and we need better, you know, better government. Because uh, we, we're very disappointed. I guess the last thing is just um, obviously you you know the people you mentioned that you wanted to honor here today, this vigil was you know a couple people who obviously one right here, another couple blocks away, and then you also included um a man who yeah, Friday night in the Bronx. Why do you think it's important to you know share that solidarity with the Bronx community? And with, uh, the Bronx community is almost in the same. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Two shooting, the homicide, the violence, the violence, violence competition. I call it. I, I don't know who's winning. Uh, all I know is that someone got very upset because there was a lot of noise. I think his last name is uh, Mr. Ruiz, and he just went up to the apartment way where the noise was coming from. I just stopped everybody to that. And uh, I mean, this, this is not sure. Now, my concern is to see that there's no sounds. People are no longer afraid of the law. They're no longer afraid of consequences. We, we need to ask ourselves why, okay? And uh, there can be a lot of answers. I'm not the only one who has answers. I mean, everybody can sit, has to sit down and ask themselves so why this really happened. Why was this not happening? When people are afraid of committing a crime because of the consequences, they most likely are going to see that. Appreciate oh, can you just give me the title again? The title. My name is Edwin Dela Cruz, and I'm uh, the founder and the vice president of the Republican Party. I founded uh, Northern Manhattan Republicans, grassroots. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we have Madeline Brain here. Yeah, Madeline, yeah. Right, yeah. Madeline. Yeah. Okay, well, Madeline. Madeline. Yeah. Madeline. Yeah. Madeline. Yeah. Madeline. Yeah. Her story. We're going to change up the background. Her story is amazing. Yeah. Make this way. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you can, uh, this way a little One bit. of many rounds. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can you move this way a little bit? This okay. way, okay. All right, you know the deal is north of me, north of the yes. camera there. Um, okay, great, right. cool. Uh, can you just say and spell your name on camera, please? First name Madeline, last name Brain, M A D E L I N E D R A M E. And do you have an official position here? Like yes, to? I do. I am the chairwoman of Victims' Rights Reform Council. I'm also the mother of a homicide. All right, so talk to me about, obviously, at rallies all the time. This is part of your life. Um, this one today, well, why is it important to have this one here today? It's important because enough is enough, right? And um, I'm really here to ask the community, right? When are we going to be tired, okay, of this type of thing happening? Why has it become such a normal and acceptable way of life? When a person can't even walk across the street without being shot in the head, right? Uh, there is no outrage from the community. There is no response from the community. There's none from our mayor, none from our district attorney. 
attorneys or anything. No arrests have been made, and it is just atrocious. It's ridiculous what is happening. This is just one community across the five barrels of New York City that this type of thing is happening in on a daily basis. It's gone largely ignored in our black and brown communities. They're purposely trying to ignore poor black and brown people. All right, it's unacceptable. There are decent, law-abiding, tax-paying citizens here, all right, who, who live here and they work here and they raise their children here and they raise their families here. We deserve just as much protection. We deserve just as much resources and programs as communities south of 96th Street, all right? Just because we are north of 96th Street, it does not mean that we are any less valuable. Our lives don't matter as much as someone who lives in another zip code. All right, I don't know this woman personally, but I know the pain of her family and her children because, like I said, I am the mother of a homicide victim. My son was murdered. He's an Afghanistan war retired veteran. All right? Where the district attorney, Alvin Bragg, declined to prosecute two of the people responsible for his murder. All right, so we got four people, but only two people are being held accountable for my son's murder. All right, and they offered plea deals. Like I said, there have no arrests been made in this murder. There are people that are in this community right now who know who did this. And until we begin to have the courage to speak up and stand up for one another and what is right, this will continue. Because the legislation, the people in charge do not care at all. We have to begin to start caring about ourselves and where we live. There's nothing to be afraid of. But you know, like people, you know, see the faces, like these are human beings that we're talking about, and things like this. And how important do you think that is to remind people of, of what that stake here is going I believe that we are becoming immune to it. All right? It's oh well, this is just what happens in the hood. No, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. It takes small group of people like this. People who care, all right, about the community. It takes the media who is going to really, you know, cover stories that really matter to the people in our community. And, and you know, um, put, it, put it on the air, the truth, to tell the truth to the people, all right? And I think that more, the more and more this begins to happen, the more and more people in the communities will begin to come out and start to stand up and speak up and fight back for themselves. Um, so Edward mentioned, you know, trying to take you know, trust between between people, uh, between citizens and police officers. You, you know, what, is that what kind of seems like that's part of the solution here too? Like, well, well, what does this look like? Well, look around you. There are no police. There are no police because of the whole defund the police thing. All right, they, they removed the police from these neighborhoods and from these communities. That's why people can do whatever they want, however they want, whenever they want, to whomever they want, and get away with it with no consequences. Right? It's empowered them. It's emboldened them, along with the bail reform laws, the raised age law. Okay. The, the uh, all those different policies that they have in place, all right, is good on one hand, but it's bad on the other. Um, so if you listen to you know the mayor and those people, they'll say, you know, they said, oh, crime is lower this December than last December. They'll say, oh, we did put more police officers in front, or they're just not as as visible. They're not always in uniform. Well, when you hear that, and then what's your response? They're manipulating the data. Because if you don't have prosecutors that are prosecuting, if you have no arrests that are being made, if you're downgrading to lower, lesser included offenses, of course you cannot count those as violent crimes. And of course the, the numbers are going to go down. But you still have victims, you still have dead bodies, you still have mothers going to the morgue to identify their child's body. You still have this people's family going to the morgue to identify her body. And no one's being held accountable, it's not being counted. So of course it's manipulating the data. And I, I would say directly to Mayor Adams to knock it off. Knock it off. We're not falling for it. A three-year-old, a three-year-old can see that it's manipulation of the data to try to fool us and convince us that you're actually doing something about this crime. And there's absolute genius out of the bottle.
All right, the genie is out of the bottle. The only way to put it back in is to put the police back, let them do their job. Uncuff the hands of the police and let them do their job. And if the kids around here want to pick up guns, put on a uniform. Learn, train how to shoot guns properly, how to handle that. Get paid for it. You want a badge of honor? Go to the military and get real badges of honor. And, and be somebody with honor and dignity and respect. What you're doing here, riding around shooting senior citizens in the head, that's some coward stuff right there. Punks do that, all right? You don't get no no points for that. There's no points for that. There is people for me. Appreciate a couple of minutes. <laughs>